All righty. What's up, retards? We are back with episode 12 of the Cartards podcast. Back with me today is Jacob. Hi. My actual co host of the day. Uh, you all know him. He's the fucking other retard that we generally have on. Yeah. We had Kyle on last time for a little bit of a celebrity co-host, except he's not a celebrity. No one's a celebrity because no one want, no actual celebrity wants to uh, be anywhere near us, but that's okay. Pog champ. Um, today we got some leftovers from last episode because all we did was talk about the Super Bowl ads for the whole episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, the uh, so we're gonna talk about the Hel- the new Hellcat Durango, um, some motorcycle chariot racing from uh, the good old Down Under Aussies, Down Under. Jesus um, Christ. <laughs> the uh, uh, this Ira scooter that I keep forgetting to talk about because I've just put it so far out of my mind because it's such a piece of shit and I just hate it. Um, the Suzuki Escudo Pikes Peak. He's forgotten, well, not forgotten supercar. I get, I don't know, somewhat forgotten. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> and then I wanted to talk about a article I saw about um, Force India Racing Point. Force India slash Racing Point. It's, it, they're the same thing. Nobody cares. Um, some uh, shit that they're talking about. Uh, yeah, so let's jump right into it. Um, the new Hellcat Durango. What do you think, Jacob? Uh, I haven't heard anything about it, so you're going to give me up to speed. Well, I've been under a rock the last week because my week was do shit for school, go to track. Yeah, it kind of seems like that. It's been like that for the past uh, two months. It's going to be like that uh... until school ends. (laughs) But last week was worse. Yeah, so the 2020 Dodge Durango SRT Hellcat confirmed, um... It's. I am kind of excited about it, uh, but also I didn't want a YouTube video. Google, fuck off. <laughs> I heard that. I was like, what the? Yeah. Fuck is that? I thought that was mine. I was like, what is that? No, that was um, me. <laughs> but uh, no, it, zero to sixty. The Trackhawk Cherokee can do zero to sixty in three point five seconds, mm-hmm. but. Um, I don't know if this will be faster, but I kind of hope it is. I don't hope it be of, faster. I'm kind of excited just because, like, SRT, SRT Durango. Mm-hmm. Oh, it just sounds so much, like, so, so many moms are going to drive it. Speaking about moms, Jacob, have you heard that the, uh, the, um, 2020 Cadillac, 2021 Cadillac Escalade is coming back. The Escalade's coming back. Mm-hmm. The overcompensating midlife crisis mom mobile has returned to Jacob. Hey man, shit on, shit on Escalades all you want. I like them. They they're either for like midlife crisis white moms, sub white suburban moms, or politicians. Or- yeah, or politicians or like rappers who put uh, spinning rims on them. Mm-hmm. You have three kinds of people that drive them, and that's it. I like the Escalade. It's nice to see it making a comeback. Mm. Is it? Is it? Is I it think good? it is. Granted, it's yeah. still an oversaturated market. I think the Escalade was one of the best examples of something coming out of the SUV craze. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just didn't ever think they were actually very useful. Well, but that's the thing. TV. They're not marketing it to be useful. They're marketing it to be, look, it's a Cadillac with eight seats. True. Welcome. They're not mar- the They're not doing already... the bullshit push that's going to be the off-road everything. Like Cadillacs every already is. seat eight people. <laughs> yes, but this one seats eight people more comfortably. You could sit yeah. 12 people here. <laughs> you can put 80 people in here. It's basically a clown car if a clown car was actually the size that a clown yeah. car could fit. Also, the 2021 Tahoe, though, I kind of get behind it. Hmm. Sorry, this just popped up in my Google feed when I Googled the 2021 Escalade. 2021 Tahoe? Mm-hmm. It looks like a Silverado, but with a... You know, instead of the bed, it actually puts the, the roof over oh. it. It, it doesn't look that o- bad. It looks ugly. I don't know. 
No, that's alright. Oh, you're I, not a Chevy I don't, guy, I don't, so you're gonna say I don't like, ugly. Yeah, I don't like the look of new Chevy pickups. I think they're, like, upside down face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, the kid from, uh... Futurama? Family Guy. Oh, no, Future Family Guy, that's right. Yeah. Well, this just got all upside down face. Oops. <laughs> Dad! <laughs> I want to be like the other kids. Yeah, no, that's that's my upside down face kid impression. I don't actually remember what he sounds like at all. So uh, that's what you guys got to live with. Uh, yeah. So Jacob, I'm going to tell a joke here and you're going to laugh, okay? Wow, you're asking a lot of me here. Yeah, I know. So what do you call a trumpet with an extra horn? A Honda. A straight piped 350Z. <laughs> I laughed so hard the mic couldn't pick it up. It was such a oh, okay. yeah. I, I was really hoping you had laughed. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. It wasn't funny. Oh, it was. I spent like all night coming up with that joke, Jacob. What the yeah. fuck? <laughs> Try it. Come back with better stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, a short podcast, guys. We're going to end it there. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't have the mental capacity to do that. Uh, so, yeah. Well, um, Hellcat Durango sounds pretty cool. Um, actually, I really don't care about SUVs anymore. I've talked about them way too much. I think you guys can tell. I'm just done with SUVs. I want something cool. I want to know. But like, I, this is a cool SUV. <laughs> it is a cool SUV, but it's still an SUV. I want a sports car. Give me okay. a fucking sports car. You're not gonna get it. This is the car. This is the world we live in. I know. Nonetheless, sports cars are cooler than SUVs. Change my mind. Blah, yes, blah. but they also do different things. So different people are gonna be more inclined to pick what they like for what they need. I know, but nonetheless, um, let's move on. Uh, Bruh. Let's move on to uh, mm, motorcycle chariot racing. Have you ever seen motorcycle chariot racing, Jacob? I have. I've seen clips of it here and there, and it's fucking hilarious. It is the best thing to come out of Australia. Yeah, eh, except mm. for Mighty Car Mods. I'd say it's better than Mighty Car Mods heretic by a slight very slight amount but yaris hilton is dead yes but it died doing what it loved being a fucking shit nugget but like a motorcycle chariot racing how do they even control this strings that's what i want to know lots of like oh my god it's fucking amazing, dude. It's what happens when you send a bunch of convicts down to an island. <laughs> they just, they, each one has two motorcycles. So. Hey, do you want to know what uh, I've been pondering about, mate? I got these what? two motorcycles here, yay. Oh, I can't. I got, this, I got this chariot I rigged up the other day. I took it off a trolley. We're going to rig these motorcycles to the chariot. We're going to back and drive them. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. Toss me back off Foster's, mate. I'm going to go chariot racing. Like, I can't believe they, they, that, like, not, it's one thing to, like, do motorcycle racing, like, you know, that would be the normal thing, but no, yeah, these this, Australians This is Australia. Decided, these, these Australians decided they needed to do motorcycle chariot racing, and, and they're it, wearing, like, they're wearing, like, Roman armor. <laughs> Roman armor, too. That's the <laughs> best part, is they're, like... <laughs> got like a, an actual announcer and he's like mm -hmm. oh, it's like a british announcer too like well yeah. maybe i don't know i don't know if like well no it wouldn't have because it wouldn't have been that long ago it was like 1962 20. or it started in the 20s oh, and yeah, 30s 19, yeah 1933 yeah oh, the, okay the 1933 so apparently it happened at the revival of the police and firemen's carnival is where they did this and they had a duet, a shining duet of V-twin Harley Davidsons bolted abreast, each towing an elaborately decorated chariot with full-size HD wheels. These contraptions exceeded anything conceived by filmmaker Cecil B. I don't know what that means, but 
you know, I'm probably too young for this. I still think it's amazing. I would love to see someone do this today, although you know it would never fly in America because we have way too many lawyers here <clears throat> at Jacob <clears throat> Law Student. <coughs> Law Student. Sorry, did I just hear hose mad? <laughs> I just heard a resounding hose Bruh. mad. Will someone sound the hose mad alarm? There you go, your hose mad alarm. I'll, just I'll a send you... No, I actually have a host map alarm I need to send you, now that I think about it. Conti carry My soundboard go, is full, go dude. For it. No, My I mean, like, you're going to put it over that because it's such a great video. Do you oh. know the YouTuber Count Dankula? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. yes. This can't happen, Jacob. Yes, it can. We're already bad enough. <laughs> yes, it can. <laughs> It can't. No, Jacob, it can't. Oh, Mark, it absolutely have, cannot happen. You have no idea how bad it's about to get. Oh, God. I don't even want to know, man. Wait, wait, what? No way. Top Gear redid this. Top Gear Live in 2011 redid chariot racing. Yes. Did you know that? I did not know with, that. Like mopeds. They did it with mopeds. Oh my four, god, of course. Four they... mopeds strapped together with a chariot behind it. Legendary. This is the greatest thing I think I've ever seen. That's it's beautiful. It doesn't the video doesn't actually show them racing. Hold up. That was just part one. Oh my god, and it it's this is amazing! I love this so much. Okay, guys, if you if you want to see this, go to Top Gear Live 2011 hyphen Chariot Racing PT2 or PT1. This is legitimately the best thing I've ever seen. They're not even wearing helmets. Oh my god, I love it. Yeah, it's Top Gear, dude. There are no rules. Yeah, it's and it's old Top Gear at that. Like, yeah, no top. rules. It's not like, uh, yeah. That is the funniest thing I've ever seen. But uh, yeah, no, that's that's motorcycle cherry racing. That's the Aussies for you. Um, I'll try and put a video over that for those of you fuckers that actually want to see um, some motorcycle chariot racing. Uh, but uh, no promises because this I don't want to copyright strike. So yeah, I'll link some videos in the description for you fuckers to look at though. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, so that's uh, some good old motorcycle chariot racing. Yeah, Mark, you're not you're not ready for this Count Dankula video. I am not. You are 100% correct. Attention, boys and girls. We've got the category one hose mad. I repeat, this is not a drill. Hose are mad. High levels of sodium chloride are being detected in the area. I repeat, this is not a drill. But it goes on like that for two minutes. Or, sorry, a minute and five seconds. I'll send this to you via email as well, but... Okay. Because you, you just have to overlay this. Yeah. Or at, at least put it in here somewhere. Because it is comic gold. <sighs> I don't know if I want what to... Gentleman. Uh, Listen, Daddy Dank gave us this meme. We must use it. I don't think you understand. Uh, God. I'm scared. Count Dankula is one of the greatest human beings to ever exist. I am so scared. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway, where were we? <laughs> I don't know, Jacob. But you got me so far <laughs> off track. We were talking about motorcycle chariot racing, and then you just I'm like doing brought my up job. Thank you. And I, I, oh god, I don't. I'm I, I'm out here uh, doing my job. What else do you want from me? If your job is being fucking dumb. Wow, you just described my entire existence. Oh god. I'm so scared. Let's let's okay. Let's move on. Oh, 
Who's so, Bob? <sighs> Marcus is a mad hoe. <laughs> so I saw this a while ago, and it's an and I just I was so angry that like it. It's it's called the Ira scooter, and it talks about how sustainable it is. Is it that that Uber eat shit for China or whatever? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it depollutes the Ira depollutes the air while delivering food around the city. Great. Congratulations. You made an electric scooter. No one, yeah, but like here's 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 the stupid part. So it says, um sustainable using the path of time blah 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 it thanks to its so ira contributes to the elimination of a- atmospheric pollutants thanks to its purifying stone see details nope. below nope. purifying stone this stone is made from a special high resistance concrete prefabricated called eco granic it is a technology developed and patented by pvt it did they talk to Gwyneth Paltrow about this stone because it's <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, no. It it actively contributes to the elimination of atmospheric pollutants. This technology is very efficient in the elimination of nitro- nitrogen oxides, volatile organic compounds, and particulate matter. This prefabricated product is environmentally friendly. It is produced with recycled, recycled materials, among others, but from construction and industrial sectors. Ecogranic combats pollution through a process similar to the photosynthesis of the plants. Ecogranic is made in two layers, depending on the comp- composition and thickness of the surface layer. The thing is, they've got a lot more on this now, but back when I looked at it a few months ago, they had absolutely nothing. Like it was yeah, because it's pseudoscience. They have to yes. and they have to make a claim. Now. They have to make a claim and then find evidence to back it up. It's they do everything backwards and wrong. Yeah, believe it's not stupid it's not people scientific in the... at all. Yeah. And you click on these links and they don't take you can't even highlight the link to go there. Yeah. Because it's a fucking picture, dude. It's not yeah. even oh my god. I don't think they don't actually want you to go there. And I guarantee if you do go there, it'd say, sorry, we can't reach this site. Yeah. No, exactly, because it doesn't fucking exist. You know what? Fuck it. Let's just try. Let's just fucking try. And I'm just gonna fucking you're gonna get like a standard html shit that like we did in holdridge's class that's exactly what it's gonna be oh my god and of course when you when i when i snap my windows so that they're half size it makes the fucking link impossible to read so Mm -hmm. h this better not give me a virus https uh that backslash backslash pvt Dot es. This is the source for their eco granite. Slash en. This is gonna give me such a bad virus. Oh my God. Eco granite. And oh wow, it's actually a website. Concrete decontaminating pavement. Eco granite is a technology developed by the Okay. Oh my Laboratory tests. At lab scale, ego granite tests show a high efficiency in the elimination of NOx, VOCs, and PM. In the case of nitrogeno oxide, it's nitrogen oxides. It's not nitrogeno oxide. Did they not even proofread their own fucking website? Jesus Christ. And ego granite has been classified in class three, the highest classification. Regarding to volatile organic compounds, this has been run following the standards. High elimination power for these pollutants. I thought you were talking about a class 3 controlled substance for a second. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? The amount of NOx degraded in one hour by ecogranic is one m. Is that meter squared? In one meter squared. Yeah, in one. They don't even know how to use the fucking carrot, dude. Oh my god, this website is awful. Like, it look this this legitimately pisses me off because it looks like a nice website at first glance like it's it's well designed it's ni- it's even, it's nice to look at but then like they didn't even fucking try and it's like meter squared they just wrote m2 instead of e- just putting a fucking carrot in there or superscripting it it's really not that hard to superscript something especially if you're doing if you're using like html 
everyone should know how to do that. This is not hard. Hey man, milligrams. you gotta remember, people are fucking stupid. You're asking a lot of people sometimes. <sighs> how can yeah, you know? dude. To save you from getting stuck on this for the next half hour, too long didn't read. It's not science. It is pseudoscience at best. You have to take all electric vehicles with a grain of salt because like everything else, it takes time and resources to produce these vehicles and they're being made in factories that nine times out of 10 are exuding pollutants into the air. Exactly. And and making- So a, even so then, there is no such thing as a non-impact because it had to come from somewhere. Unless yeah. it was handmade by someone who chopped it with wood refined it themselves polished it themselves there is going to be an environmental impact and even then he had to make the impact of cutting down a tree there is no such thing as a non-impact vehicle yeah making concrete is super fucking um hydrocarbon heavy and like it releases a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere so they god it's so dumb it's so it makes me so angry because they're like oh it's so good and and like and it just has an exposed wire like look at the design and it just has this exposed wire that runs or not exposed but it's a it's a not a bare wire but it's a you know just a loose wire from the throttle or the battery or whatever it is into the into the um that goes into the uh, into the handlebars, and like literally, it's already on the handlebar. All you have to do is is run it through the handlebar. Run it through. The you way. take the extra effort to run it through. Oh no! But then, but then the cost of it goes up because that's extra time in production, Mark. No, it, it literally the design. Mark, the two cents it no, saves. No, no, it doesn't save two. This design does not save money though. Oh, but the Mark, it, it does. You don't understand. Oh my God. I hate this so much. It doesn't. Trust me. And then and then they talk about their like special wheel that is an airless tire and everything. Oh, wow, great. Airless tires have existed forever. Ever heard of metal? Ooh, or like ooh, the ooh. wooden fucking tires they used to use during World War II? Iris tires are supported by a mesh of spokes that are made of thermoplastic resin. Oh, you know where plastic comes from? Burning oil. Yeah. Fuck it. The material is flexible and durable, and best of all, it's 100% recyclable. Recyclable. The flexibility allows for recycled plastic. Oh. Airless tires concept is a technology developed and patented by Bridgestone. Okay, I don't care. Good job, Bridgestone. You did a thing. Nobody cares. But it just, oh my god, it just makes me so angry because, like, it's not new. They've been doing this for a while, but the problem with airless tires is the sidewall area is so decreased that you just, oh, you can't do. Yeah, because all the force gets exuded onto the, the side, the sidewall, is it not? Yeah, More and, or less. And, yeah, but the sidewall area is decreased. So if you try and like turn really sharp, mm -hmm. obviously these tires have a large um radius to them so you can still yeah. have a bit of it but if you turn too far it's just gonna fucking slide out yeah because there's no more that's that's what always annoyed me about airless tires all their all the designs because there's no there's no uh, sidewall to it so as soon as you start to really turn hard on them you just lose all your grip mm -hmm. but Oh, it just that Ira scooter just pisses me off so much, man. Oh, makes me hella angry. So angry. Do you know when we? You know when we what? Started this? No, it was oh, right sorry. around four o'clock. So we've been going for almost half an hour. Okay, because I didn't timestamp fucking anything. So, yeah. Again, I don't have a problem with what the scooter is. I have a problem with its claims. Yeah. Electric vehicles are not carbon neutral. 
they are they're, still adding to the problem. Yeah, they're 100% not. Again, I've said this before and I will say it again. A electric car immediately out of the factory will have a higher carbon footprint than a Mitsubishi Mirage 150,000 miles into its life. Yeah. Again, there are better ways to make better cars. It's just electric vehicles and electric technology will not catch up to a more carbon neutral standpoint until the technology advances to where we rely on less toxic materials to use these and we can refine them and utilize them in a way that doesn't hurt the environment as much as it does. The production of these is going to push us in that direction faster, but until it actually does, they can't make these claims that it's carbon neutral. Yeah. It's like companies that that hide the names of sugars in their in their products, which is be- becoming an uh, increasing trend in the last five years because the American public has gotten smarter, smarter about realizing, hey, there's a fuck ton of sugar in this. Maybe I shouldn't shove my face with it. But then companies like Nestle and Ferrero Rocher with you know, Nutella and some of their, their chocolate drinks, they just change the name for sugar. And then people yeah. are dumb as fuck, and they're like, oh, it doesn't say sugar. Must be healthy. Yeah. You just have to wise up as a public. That's mm-hmm. a lot to ask, considering only 33% of the country will ever get a bachelor's degree. Not hmm. saying you need a bachelor's degree to be smart. I'm just saying it's those yeah, people who I, are going to go out and get it that have a higher chance of I, I introspection. Don't I don't agree with like having a really high amount of people with you know higher education yeah no higher education exists for a reason i know i know way too many people spending money at college and not learning anything Mm -hmm. or ever heard of a business degree yeah or learning something that they just shouldn't be learning because they're not gonna get a job in it anyway ever heard of a woman's studies degree yeah gender studies you mean gender studies um what's another retarded one philosophy <laughs> no philosophy philosophy actually philosophy has bad. its reason yeah philosophy and psychology mm-hmm. have their places in the modern world. gender studies yeah. is a joke yeah there's a lot of joke degrees yes most of them are mbas because that's like mbas are the white bread of a college degree everybody wants to get their hands on it everybody has some experience in it because it's basic it's easy to approach and you can do anything with it yeah yeah but yeah it, it's there's just yeah not 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 a good thing we're getting not quite into the political zone but we're getting a little getting a little little on the edge there jacob so i'm gonna rein us in here and we're gonna talk about my one of my favorite cars of recently that i learned about the toyota which, yaris no oh we're going to talk about the uh, Suzuki Escudo. Escudo! Suzuki Escudo! So, in, in North America, the Suzuki um, Escudo was sold as the Suzuki Sidekick, or in the United States anyway, which I'm sure many of you know. Those little, tiny, little cars that just, you know, drive around. They're adorable. They've got, you know, a, a rag top on some of them, and they're just... They're, they're adorable. Would love to have one of those. Usually they had manuals and everything. They're just, they're adorable little cars. Um, and, um, however, back in 1994, um, Nobu, Nobuhiro Mons, Monster, Tajima, Nobuhiro Tajima, who was nicknamed Monster, took an Escudo basically turned it into this monster supercar um, for Pikes Peak Hill Climb. It was a twin-engined um, twin tur- or twin-engined turbocharged 1.6 liter inline four engines. Two of them. One in the front and one at the rear. And you had you know, driving the one at the front driving the front and the one at the rear driving the rear wheels. Um, the combined power output in that thing was 900 horsepower. And it had a curb weight of 900 kilograms. That's Ooh. the same as the... That's the Koenigsegg same... Koenigsegg 1-1. One, one. Yeah, that's the same as the Koenigsegg 1-1. One to one. Or at least the same principle. One kilogram yeah. per horsepower. Yeah, it was insane. And um, basically, Nobuhiro Tajima um, owned the tuning shop, Monster Tuning, 
uh, or Monster Motorsports or whatever that built this car and built um, and and like built everything on it, <laughs> essentially. Um, and basically, the only thing similar at, to what the um, original Suzuki was like the front grill the headlights and some of yeah and the headlights and that's it well yeah because I, I took a I took a gander car. at it and it you wouldn't guess that, that thing's like supposed to be like baby SUV yeah so it, it won Pikes Peak in 1994 and um, or sorry it finished fifth in 1994 and won outright in 1995 which was the first which made Tajima the first Japanese racing driver to win Pike Peak Hill Climb. And then in 1996, they they revamped this the car completely, made it into a twin turbocharged two and a half liter V6 engine, front engine with a power output of 981 horsepower at 9,000 RPM. Four wheel drive, weighed 800 kilograms, so it had more than one to one basically power to weight um and and it was you know driven by the same you know nobuhiro tajima and it finished second overall at pike's peak in 1996 1998 and nine and 1991 and it won uh queenstown gold rush international hill climb in 1998 1999 and 2000 um in 2006, a newer Escudo went on to win at Pikes Peak in, two, in um, there and Queenstown in 2004, 5, 6, and 7. It's a crazy car. It's got some good legacy on it too. Yeah, one of the coolest, one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Just so raw and so like just amazing. Because it's you you look at it and I don't even see, I don't, I, I do not see at all a sidekick. Mm -hmm. All I see is just some monster race car. It's that crazy. wing, the arrow on the front. Oh my God. It's crazy. It's and something is, I would have had on my poster if I was born 10 years yeah. before I was. Yeah. And this thing was, um, this thing was built, you know, in the time when Pikes Peak was not fully paved. Oh yeah, when it was still half dirt. Yeah, and it's and oh my gosh, it's just imagine imagine being a racing driver during that time, driving on that half dirt surface, and um, you know, driving these cars that had very little in the ter in terms of traction control you know stability control abs and just driving this car and even even more than that driving the version was twin engine or building that twin engine car you know making the making the throttle control both engines at once making the clutch control both clutches so, at that's once, a bit of an engineer the shifter control both transmissions at once like that is ridiculous and it's so cool. You might call it the, a marvel of modern engineering for its time. Yeah, like, or at least the dedication of a of a team of engineers who said, "Oh, twin engine car -aru. Yeah, twin engine cars are just ridiculous. And you look at the you look at the twin engine one from ninety four, ninety five, and it's just like, wow. And it's it's funny because everything else on the car has been changed. Stock steering wheel. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's only we ran out of it's budget. A and it's just wow. Like I only care if it's a Momo wheel. I have no interest in the car now. Everything's custom. Everything's just built. The turbo, the turbo, the the turbo for the front engine is. Um, in in the uh, in the passenger compartment. <laughs> That's fucking With amazing. A nice, like extra firewall built in there. Yes, them. like literally oh a firewall god. at this point. And just oh my god, it's so minimal. 
It's good. It's like the the new uh, Robert Pattinson Batman yeah. movie. So raw. Yeah, it's got two tachometers <laughs> and two oil pressure, two oil temperature. Yeah, dude, you got two engines to keep track of. Both engines. Oh my gosh, it's just. It's like twins. It's so amazing. I would I would love to have some kind of car like this, just because like you just oh, just think about building this thing or driving it. Oh my god, it'd be terrifying. But it'd be so much fun to drive. Yeah, I'd like to get my hands on that in like dirt rally. Or fuck yeah. even a set of Corsa. If only they put like this car in Like dirt fun rally. cars in dirt rally. I wanna get like I wanna dump the money into a wheel and pedal setup. Eventually. You would. I uh, dude, I will. I have a I have an old uh, wheel and pedal setup. I just want one with a with a manual shifter. It's really all I want. Just a yeah, manual mine gate. Mine doesn't have that. It's got. It's just got the flappy paddles. Oh, that's cute. Say, I, I'd want to do it. I just don't want to dump a thousand dollars into the frame, the wheel, and the everything. The problem, the problem with mine is you just like mount it to the desk, and then the you know the uh, the gas and brake pedal sit on the floor, and they move around as you're trying to mm-hmm. use them. Well, that's and, why you get the that's why you get the frame, so it's like all yeah. bolted into one spot, and yeah. you're basically sitting and, in a in a, a tube chassis race car. And mine is old, so when you um, step on the gas really hard, um, it doesn't go to full throttle. It goes to like ninety nice. percent, but not quite. That's all full you need, throttle, which is kind of fucking annoying. So I never really because I used to play. Uh, Oh, what was it? Microsoft uh, uh, Rally Sport Challenge mm-hmm. with that back in the day, and I could and I could never win because the um, the wheel wouldn't go to 100% throttle, no matter what I did, which was very annoying. But yeah, Rally Sport Challenge was like you know the dirt rally of its time. Mm-hmm. It was so cool. I think my uncle so, had Rally Sport Challenge. Yeah, I, I played it. I had it for a very long time and I played it. And now I'm sad because it doesn't work on Windows 10. So big sad. It doesn't? No. Nope. That's it's unfortunate. I say I have a I have an original copy of Diablo 1 that I've been trying to get to work on Windows 10 forever. Yeah. I wonder if StarCraft still works on Windows 10. Because I have StarCraft 1. <laughs> Ooh. Legendary. Yeah, dude. An original disc of StarCraft 1. Damn. Yeah, dude, that Diablo 1 was fucking incredible. Because I know it worked on Windows 8. So I got it to work on the on my old, old laptop back home. And I just wish I could get it to run on Windows 10. But yeah. when I rebuilt my computer, I took out the disc drive, so that dream is dead. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a desk drive in my computer right now, so... Um... Yeah, nonetheless... Uh, that Escudo... Crispy. Uh, Dirt Rally, if you're there, you should add the... Uh, yeah, um... To who's the... This. Who's the developers for that game? It's not Playground, it's... Oh, Codemasters. It's, uh, Codemasters, yeah. Yeah, Codemasters. If you get a whip of us, the Escudo, <laughs> please, both but, versions. Yeah. So Nobu, so yeah, Nobuhiro Tajima, who was born in, he was born in 1950, the 28th of June 1950, and he raced all the way up to 2014. Jesus! In, in, a, <laughs> in an e, in, a, in an electric modified division third f- overall fourth place. Damn. At um. Pikes Peak special. That's that's amazing. That's a good like, life. Can you imagine? So so he was born in 1950, and he raced until 2014. He's 74 years old. Yeah, dude. And still racing, like untouchable. Oh, so it just warms my heart. This guy is just so and so cool. 
I would say all both of my or one of my grandfathers drove till the day he died. So like, hmm. I I want to get to that stage, but like competitive driving someday. Yeah. Yeah. Someday when I have money to throw out a car. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and, and he owns Tajima Motor Corporation, which used to be Tajima Tuning, I think. And now it's actually like a motor corporation, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. That would be a really awesome place to work. Mm-hmm. It builds like cool shit. But yeah, no, just, just a really cool guy. Such a talented racing driver and very and like from the looks of it talented car designer as well you know just very yeah very 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 cool yeah and and in 2013 pikes peak international participated with an original electric racing car e-runner pikes peak special and achieved first place for the electric vehicle division First electric vehicle to break the 10 minute barrier and set a class record of 9 Jeez. minutes 46 seconds. Like, yeah, dude, I, I wish they would have brought back the, the hill climb for Dirt Rally 2.0. They don't have they don't have hill climb in Dirt Rally 2.0. Not anymore. That's dumb. I I, I, I really and I really like the hill climb part of Dirt Rally. Like it was the, fun, you know. Yeah, like racing Pikes Peak is a hell of a lot. Oh of fun. my god, it's terrifying. You have to, you have to basically memorize it's raw. it. Yeah, Racing Pike Pike Peak because it doesn't give you a navigator. Just, yeah, it doesn't give you a co-driver because none of the, you know, none of the Pike's Peak racers have. They, yeah. like, none of the Pike's Peak race cars have a, you know, a, 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 that seat. They don't have that seat, mm-hmm. so they just have to memorize they, it. Yeah, lots of practice but, however, laps. Pike's Peak. Pikes Peak is a pretty easy course to read, like just mm-hmm. from driving it. Like yeah. you can tell when a when a slow turn is coming up versus a fast turn pretty well, and you can get a decent um, a decent time just driving it without knowing it that well. But driving it and over and over until to the point where you memorize each and every turn is really helps. Y- yeah. <laughs> or you can drive it in sectors. That's what I do. No, actually, I don't. I drive the full course every time, and then I get frustrated because I ding like one guardrail. I'm like, fuck, and I restart. That's how I am with, with drive. dirt in general. I try to. I I love the dirt games. It's just they're so mentally taxing. Yeah, you just get so frustrated after a while. I don't get frustrated. It's just like after a while, I just get like worn out. Yeah, from having to think you, that hard about a, a yeah. game. Yeah, and yeah, because like, like I yeah, I play a lot of competitive rainbow six and i have to think a lot in that game but like that is the hardest i will ever think about a video game is for dirt rally yeah exactly but it is just taxing Mm -hmm. very much so but it is the big fun What's next, Mark? What's next on the docket? What is next on the docket, Jacob? Let's Cock and see. ball torture? Uh, no, we're not going to talk about that unless you really want to. We don't to have talk to about talk it, about it. No, 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 we're not talking about it. It's that it, it, the my 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 clock says cock and ball torture. It's on the schedule. We're not talking about it. We're experienced. Oh, I see. Yes, pain. Pain without love pain yeah. okay pain but no seriously what the fuck is going on all right uh we're talking about um moving to force india racing point Pog. we all love lance stroll so much yes i, I hate money. Lance stroll i hate him so much he is my least favorite person <laughs> in all of f1 so, Lance Stroll, I, I recently read an article um, about uh, um, <clears throat> how Racing Point Boss predicts podiums and has a cheeky jab at Gro- 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 Grosjean at the 2020 launch. So, I was reading this and basically it's talking about how um, I'm going to make a prediction here, is what he says, or 
Saznar South. I can't read. I don't know. S reading fucking hard. It's okay. Take your time. Nar. Okay. Anyway, I predict that before the race they'll be drinking water, and after the race this year, both of them will be on the podium at least once, drinking the champagne. And it's like, yeah, yeah, with fucking Lance Stroll driving for you, fat fucking chance. Unless he actually like took some time, did some work in the Sims, put some work on the track. It's said that they have been. Um, this year we want to take a step up from where we normally can be. Um, we've done a lot of development work over the winter. It's not easy. The competition's getting stronger. McLaren did a really good job last year. Renault with the might of the motor company behind them and 650 plus employees. Um, Toro Rosso with the resurgence of the Honda powertrain did really well. Yeah, I was really excited with Toro Rosso Honda, but uh, um, basically he said our drivers have been doing to keep fit work in our simulator. They've been doing a lot of simulator and a good chance to hit our targets. And then the last thing he said was we want to outscore our competition and for us to achieve that, we've set ourselves to do this year with what sorry fuck um we've got to get both drivers in the points at every race we've done that in the past anyway we've had the potential to have both of them in the points at every race sometimes on lap you don't know what's going to happen romaine <laughs> romaine gross john's still racing he could run into you you never know mm -hmm. but like come on you never know something. like yeah roman like gross john fucking sucks but who the fuck cares like Haas is doing actually really well for what you know it's like their third time their third their third season maybe mm -hmm. and like i don't give a fuck about what, what lance stroll does like they just need to get him the fuck out of there because he's only racing for one reason and everyone knows the reason and there's better drivers who have been passed up because they think that He's got something that he just doesn't have because daddy's money. Yeah, dude. Goes a long way. And I hate, I hate what he looks like. Like, can I just, can I send this? <sighs> uh, I guess I can't. Never mind. I just love how you just like casually hate on people. I do. I, well, I just... Stroll just pisses me off because he has a gold F1 seat and uh, just like it's so extra. Everything about him is just so extra. Unlike so you know, Sergio, you hate, Sergio, you hate people who like flex? Sergio, yes. <laughs> I, so like, you hate Lil Nas X? Uh, yes. You're homophobic. His, his song is alright. Like, you know, Old Town Road, you know, kind of a banger. That goes hard as banger. fuck. I'll, I'll admit it. I'll admit Panini, it. hello? Hey, Panini. Don't you be but, a meanie. Don't you want to be a like, go? Why you got to keep it true me? Aye. So the ultimate flex person is like, um, what's his name? Um, oh, what's his name? Well, we'll just say like Jake Paul is like the ultimate guy that just tries to flex on people who and jake paul oh yeah both and uh, both like the paul no brothers one, no one fucking cares literally well, but no they're one. they're a different breed they're douche tubers yeah well and this like lance stroll is like the epitome of that kind of person but he's not on youtube but if he was i know he'd have the same he'd be exactly the same mm -hmm. literally exactly the same so I really, I really don't like people like that. I hope I never have to interact with someone like that. And you know, if this channel keeps going the way it's going, we never will. <laughs> uh... You just gotta learn to not care about as many things as you do, Mark. Get it? Get it? I said. Oh yeah. The channel. Yeah. Yeah. Dead channel. Dead on just... start. Yeah. Get the fucking l laugh at it, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted from you. You happy? Yeah. Does that hurt my throat? Good. My throat hurts, but for different reasons. Well, yeah, because you're suck cock. Yeah. Well, no. But also, we all know it's one of your favorite hobbies, Mark. You can't I, hide it I, anymore. Uh, uh, I, I, I drank, I drank, I drank too much last night. 
that that hurts your throat. Yeah, you get dehydrated the, in the throat. What the fuck? Throat. Fuck you, Jacob. I don't give a shit. Do you want to do some, uh, Jacob? Do you have any car memes this week? We're doing our uh, car. I meme don't. Review. I do not have any car memes. Fuck. You know how my last week was. Damn it, Jacob. I have had time to eat, sleep, practice class, and every now and then, like, not hate my life. Well, this is unfortunate. I might have something, though. We'll see. We'll see. Gotta check my Instagram saved folder. Right. So, oh, oh, okay, guys. I've got a good one. Therapist. PT multi-cruiser convertible doesn't exist. It cannot hurt you. And then it's <laughs> PT multi-cruiser. And it's a it's a PT cruiser morphed with a multipla in a convertible. <laughs> and it's quite possibly the worst thing I've ever seen. Kill it. Like, I actually, it, it scares me. Kill it with fire. And then the next one I have, guys, and that, that's a good meme. Like, that's one of the finest memes, car memes I've ever seen. It brings together all the terrible cars that are, like, exist, or two of the most terrible cars that exist. The only the only thing worse is if they, like, somehow put an, morphed it with an Aztec. Pontiac oh, my Aztec. God. Oh, that would make me actually, like, probably have a brain aneurysm. But nonetheless, it's pretty fucking funny. It's a very good meme. I rate it at a 8 out of 10 on the uh, meme scale. I'll give it to you there. Quality meme. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to uh, put it put it up on the uh, put it up on the good old uh, video whenever this gets uh, published. It is currently you know five o'clock on a Monday. Big on Monday night. President's Day. Uh, happy President's Day, you <laughs> fuckers. Yeah. That was disgusting, Jacob. But that, would, that one tasted like beef jerky. Ooh, that's yummy. Beef jerky is good. And then the next one, it's one of the financial support memes. It's a Bernie financial support memes. And it says, I am once. A, <laughs> it's an EJ25. And it says, I am once again asking for pistons, rings, head gaskets, and a timing belt. <laughs> And it's, it's really funny. You know, when like, you said that, that's exactly what I thought of. Like, is it, a, is it a fucking Subaru asking for a head gasket? <laughs> yep, it's another EJ meme. That's where my brain went, dude. I need help. I am once again coming to you for your financial support. My EJ asking for another head gasket. Yeah. Or when, you're, when your man is a car man who's a broke boy, I am once again coming to you for your financial support. I am once again asking for your financial support. Um, yeah, so we we have we have gotten a little bit more uh, a little bit more on the Instagram lately. Uh, follow us at Real Cartards on Instagram. But I'm glad to see that people are reaching out on Instagram. I've gotten some uh, nice little DMs in my DM box. Um, keep it up. You guys seem to like the most recent posts about Bugs, Bugs the uh, Bug Eye Subaru, Yoink. Um, where I posted it at a gas station because I'm a heathen and that's what I do. I take pictures of cars at gas stations. You know, that's <laughs> basically who I am. It's one of those fuckers. Whoa. But I seem to like not be able to break the, uh, the like 60 barrier. Or mm -hmm. like, the, like, I always get around the same amount of uh, likes um, when I post a good picture of a car. It never like increases all that much, but who knows? I got, I got a good reach. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that maybe somebody will be like, oh, this guy's, this guy posts good shit, and then they're like, hey, you want some money? Even though I know there's no chance of that, but you know what? That's okay. We're gaming. Because, yeah, we're gaming, dude. So, you know, it's really, really sad. Mm -hmm. But we need, we need more. You guys on Instagram need to follow the YouTube channel. Because mm -hmm. if we got every single one of you to subscribe to the YouTube channel, then we'd be set. Yeah, dude. We wouldn't, but we'd act like we were set because we'd have like 53 people on our YouTube channel. Yeah, that'd be fucking massive. 
it, it would it, you know it'd be more than we have now which is four so uh <laughs> and uh two of them are us i think <laughs> yep but that's okay we're working towards it right guys progress is progress progress you gotta walk not. before you can run and you gotta crawl before you can walk and you have uh, to not exist before you can crawl inspiring words from jacob also, Inspiring. Mark, we're done being sad because sad backward is Daz, and Daz not good. Okay. Well, nonetheless, uh, I have I nothing else depression. to talk about today, um, other than I could talk about. Um, you re- remember that movie I told you to watch and you never watched it? Well, yes, I'm because- going to talk about it for a couple minutes here, and uh, you're going to go on YouTube and search up the first scene of the movie and watch it because i want you to see how terrible just the first scene is all right hold on um it's called That's... six the movie is called six oh fuck. the movie is called six underground my guys and let me tell you it's one of the worst movies ever like it's actually terrible opening scene yeah yep opening scene It's actually the worst movie I think I've ever seen. Um, Is it like the first three minutes of the movie or something like that? Yeah, sure. With a car chase? Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay, Alfa Romeo, Pog. Being chased by an Audi TT. That's fucking hilarious. Yep. So so watch the uh, watch the really, really watch Dave Franco like inside Uh the car and his like driving choreography that fucking sucks you can tell he's never driven a car and Mm -hmm. he's obviously not in the car while (laughs) ryan reynolds just screaming gun that is my internal mood yes (laughs) but yeah so the problems i have with these movie with this movie is it was uh directed by um who was it directed by fuck He's, you it's know, not Michael booms. Bay. There's not enough explosions. No, it is Michael Bay. That's who directed. You're it. fucking kidding me. Oh, no. okay. No, I see it now. I see it now. Yeah, I can Michael see it, the camera Bay. work. Yep, it's yep. Michael Bay. Yeah, right. So it's Michael Bay, and that's that. That should be your first warning of like not to watch this movie. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa! Don't rip up Michael Bay too hard. Transformers One was a masterpiece. Okay, but even just look at the first fucking, um, the. There's a there's a there's a really awful um, there's this poster that I'm looking at right now, uh-huh. and uh, I'm just gonna name this Michael Bay <laughs> because it perfectly encapsulates Michael Bay. It's if you search Six Underground and go to images, it's like the fourth image, and it's just it's this poster and it's. And it shows the car, you know, the Alfa Romeo, the green Alfa Romeo. And it says, they say no one can save the world. Meet no one, which is like the basically what, what the film is all about. And it just says Ryan Reynolds, a Michael Bay film. Six hey, man. underground. I mean, and it's so it's so the poster. There's so much going on. It's well, yeah, like, it's an action uh, movie. What do you expect? Oh, it's so bad. Dude. Okay, yeah, this dialogue kind of sucks. Yeah, the dialogue is terrible. The penis joke was funny. Um, the driving is terrible. Like, the, like you yeah, can tell- when they're when they don't show you what's going on inside the car, it doesn't look fine. But then they cut to the fucking kid who's driving around Ryan Reynolds, and he's throwing his arms back and forth like it's the fifties. And and what the and fuck he, is this dude gonna hit the fa- hit in the face with a grenade? What? What? Also, he like I think he's I think that's supposed to look like a like a you know like a built drift car, right? It's supposed I to don't... look like it's modified. And which car? The the Alfa Romeo. Uh huh. And he keeps grabbing this thing that I think is supposed that to look like, like an e-brake. Yeah. But it's not. It's just like a piece of like plastic that's just sitting there. Like you can see that it's like loose yeah. on the dash, and he's just yeah. Like, I saw that. That was fucking weird. It's not real, and it makes me so angry because it's so bad. Like, you know, props to the driver, the stunt driver that actually did it, because mm-hmm. it's, it's it's incredible pretty, driving. It's pretty well driven, 
but it, the acting that Dave, it's Dave Franco. The acting is so bad, even still, like, oh God. And he's only in the movie for like three minutes and I already hate him. Cause he, he dies at the end of the scene. Like, because like, he's like, oh shit. And he steer and he stops and he steers and a forklift goes through his fucking neck. And it's like, this is so dumb. I hated it. I hated that movie so much. And I watched the whole thing. I fucking suffered for you motherfuckers to watch this whole thing just to talk about because I thought there was going to be like more. Oh, well, you didn't it. say it was a Netflix exclusive movie. No wonder it fucking sucks. Yeah, it's a Netflix original. And yeah, it's fucking awful. I suffered through the whole thing. I mean, yeah, the just a little bit in the car. Thing. The the writing just looks sloppy. The, the, cin- the, the cinematography the- itself is amazing. The editing, if we were to take away the dialogue, it'd be pretty. It'd be better. Yeah, the editing makes it even worse. So when, well, yes, once you actually start Michael watching Bay the movie, it is a Michael Bay movie. The editing is so confusing; you have no idea what's happening when it's happening at all. And like that kind of editing, where it's like a split timeline and they show like c- clips kind of out of order, and then it all comes together in the end, or is supposed to, can be really cool. Like that's how they did The Witcher, which I watched mm-hmm. twice. I have already. yet to watch The Witcher, and and it's. Like it make like it makes sense at the end, and you're yeah. like, oh, this is really cool. This timeline is actually really, really cool. I like how they did this because it makes it, it makes it um, more suspenseful this way, right? Mm-hmm. But the way they did it in this movie makes it so confusing. You have no idea what the fuck is going on or when anything is happening, and you just like you don't care about the characters because there's no development. You don't care. Oh, you just oh god. Oh god, I I can't I can't I just can't. It's it's too it's too awful. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Dave Franco and Ryan Reynolds, but this movie was terrible, and I hope no one ever has to watch it ever again. And if they do, they are allowed to turn it off at least three minutes in. So that's the only good part of the movie, and it's not even good because it's just Ryan Reynolds screaming the whole fucking time. Literally, I watched this movie because I saw Ryan Reynolds, and I was like, "Oh, hey, that's that looks like mildly interesting. It's got a car in it." And then mm-hmm. I vomited profusely out of my penis. Oh, okay. Yes, it's called cum. Well, I finally got that out of the way. I finally did it, Jacob. I I faced my demons, and I talked about the worst movie I think I've ever seen. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, guys. Well, we're going to end it there for today. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> my my roommates are playing CSGO, and I think he just said Allahu Akbar. Yes. <laughs> Terrorist um, win. <laughs> bruh, 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 bruh. You guys didn't hear that? I just tried to bleep it with a bruh. Um, yeah. Alrighty. Well. I will uh, stay Thanks classy, for watching, retards. Y'all. We will see you later. Peace. Fuck. I forgot to queue up the thing. I'm going to have to cut this out. I'm retarded. Craig, I got to fucking kill you. Do you remember how you held me then? Now you got me reaching out Out. And do you see you got me falling again More times than I can get out Down in the deep of my mind I cry for you and you're always inside Down in the deep of my mind
more times than I can get out. 